So welcome everyone first to our fifth talk on circuit bimodules, uh, finishing the classical theory. So from next time onwards, there will be some diagrammatics. But we need to kind of finish today the, the, the classical theory of circuit bimodules. And Na Naima will tell us, uh, well, well, basically that they will categorize the Hecker algebra. So go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay, so welcome to my talk about the circle bimodules or the fifth talk of the seminar. First, I will introduce you to twisted actions. Um, with them, we can define the standard bimodules. Then I will show you the split Grothendieck group. Um, we will talk about filtrations, some more definitions until we finally get to the circles categor categorification theorem. Okay, let's start with twisted actions. Um, let A be a commutative graded algebra base ring K, then an A bimodule on a K module M with action from A times M to M and M times A to M. This A by module is equivalent to a left A tensor over K A module with left action from A tensor over K A times M to M. If we have a K algebra automorphism eta, which goes from A to A, we can twist uh, right A module by eta. This means the action is defined as follows. For A in A, and m in m, m times a with the multiplication over eta is defined as m times eta of a instead of just m times a. Now, if m is an a bimodule, then the bimodule structure on m is encoded by rho. Rho goes from a tensor over k a to the endomorphisms over k of m. The composite map rule composed with ID tensor eta defines a new A by module structure on the same K module M. In this new A module, the left action stays exactly the same, whereas the right action gets twisted by eta. We denote this new A by module by M eta. If we had two automorphisms eta and psi, we get a nice property, which is the tensor of ID and eta composed with psi equals I, the tensor of ID and eta composed with the ID and, and psi. So we have M of eta composed with psi equals M of eta of psi. Thanks to the natural monoidal structure of the category of A bimodules, the bimodule M eta can be naturally identified with the tensor over A of M and A eta. From that, we can deduce that A of eta composed with psi is isomorph to A of eta of psi, which is isomorph to the tensor over A of A eta and A psi. We will use this identification a little later. Before going on with the definition of the standard bimodules, we once again let R be the polynomial ring of the geometric representation acted on by W. Um, we will now consider the automorphisms of R. In fact, we will specific, specifically consider the automorphisms of the form an eta which go from R to R, where A maps to XA for X in W. Um, for example, if we had eta ID with the identity in W, it would just be the identity map, which is not very interesting. Mm -hmm. Now we finally get to the definition of the standard bimodules. They are defined as the R bimodules of the form Rx, um, defined as R eta x, as we had just before, obtained by twisting the regular bimodule R by the tensor of ID of the ID and eta x, which, as we now know, 
means the left side has the normal left action mm -hmm. and we twist the right side by eta x for some x in w. And additionally, we define the standard bimodule category to be the smallest strictly full subcategory of graded R bimodules, which contains Rx for every x in W and is closed under finite direct sums and grading shifts. Um, this property, which we have seen a few slide, slides back, we can apply that here analogous and follow that the tensor of Rx and Ry is isomorph to Rxy. This implies that the standard bimodule is monoidal. Here we see an easy example. If R is the polynomial ring with variables x1, x2, and x3, mm -hmm. and W is the symmetric group S3, then we take S, the permutation which switches the second and third element, um, and the, then the left action is the normal multiplication by F, and the right action is the multiplication by F of X1, X3, X2. As you can see, X2 and X3 have switched places. Now we define the graded homomorphism space. We take two graded objects, in our case, two graded, two graded bimodules, M and N. Then the graded home space of M and N is the direct sum over I in Z of the sets of homomorphisms from M to Ni. We say that the, homo, that the morphisms from M to the power of I to N to the power of I plus K for some K in Z are the homogeneous, are homogeneous of degree K. Next, we have a lemma which states that for any X and Y in W, we have the graded home space of Rx and Ry is exactly R if X equals Y. And zero otherwise as a graded vector space. We follow that Rx is in the composable for all X in W because we can deduce from the lemma that endomorphisms of Rx, which are the homomorphisms of Rx to Rx, is exactly R. So it has no non-trivial idempotence that makes the standard bimodule a comprehensible category because the intercomposable objects are exactly the Rx and their grading shifts. As we have seen, they tensor in the same way that the elements of W multiply. Um, we will now introduce the split Grothendieck group of the category of standard bimodules. Mm -hmm. It is by definition an abelian group generated by symbols B for each object B in the category of standard bimodules with the relation the symbol of B equals the symbol of B prime plus B double prime whenever B is isomorphed to the tensor of B prime into B double prime. And since the standard bimodule is monoidal, the split Grothendieck group is a ring via um, this B times B prime is the symbol of B, B double, B, so B prime. should be a, a, an a O plus. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. It's okay. Um, we can make the split Grothendieck group into a set um, of V plus minus one algebra with VB defined as the symbol for B with a shift in grading by one. But we will come back to that later. Now I will move on with a short remark. In fact, the split Grothendieck group 
is isomorphic to the group algebra set V plus minus one of W with an isomorphism which sends the symbol of the standard by module Rx to the standard basis element X in W. Um, we say that the standard by module is a categorification of this group algebra. We can take this even further and say that the circle by modules categorify the Hecke algebra. Basically, the Hecke algebra is like a deformation of the group algebra, and the circle by modules are like a deformation of the standard by modules, as you can see here. Now we recall that BS equals tensor over RS of R and R with a shift in grading by one. And the bot Samuelson by modules BS of X asso associated with an expression X, which is S1 up to SD, is the iterated tensor product of the by modules BSI. Now let's consider CS as we had last week, which is um, a half of alpha S tensor one plus plus one tensor alpha S and DS, which is the same, a half of alpha S tensor one, but with a minus one tensor alpha S. We will now talk about the lemma for which is very similar as we have seen last week, but now we will instead, we will observe the properties of DS instead of CS. Um, the lemma states that for any F in R, F times CID equals CID times F plus DS times the um, delta S of F and f times ds equals ds times s of f. We will prove that, but for that we will first assume that f is asymmetric and where delta s of f is zero and s of f is f. So we will prove the lemma first for this, um, for this assumption. Um, but for this assumption, it's very clear because um, it, it just follows from the lemma which we have seen last week and simply from the symmetry of F. So it holds in, for both equations. Um, now we will assume that F is alpha S and delta S of S delta S of F is two, because that follows from the Demasure operator, which was defined as F minus minus F divided by alpha S, which in this case would be two, and S of F is minus F. Um, note that alpha S is a basis element. Um, we will, we see that C of ID, C ID times F plus ds times delta s of f is one tensor one times alpha s plus two ds because cid is just the one tensor one mm -hmm. and then we can take alpha s from the right side into the tensor and we replace ds with its definition then we get one tensor alpha s plus alpha s tensor one minus one tensor alpha s, which obviously cancels out one tensor alpha s and we get alpha s tensor one, which is equal to alpha s times one tensor one, which is what we wanted to show. And for the second equation, we start with f times ds, which is alpha s times a half of alpha s tensor one minus one tensor alpha s. And this equals, we take the alpha s from the left side into the brackets, then we get a half of alpha s squared tensor one minus alpha s tensor alpha s. 
then we take alpha s to the right side and because it's anti-symmetric we get a minus sign so we have a half of alpha s tensor minus alpha s minus one tensor alpha s times minus alpha s and then we can take this minus alpha s on the right side outside and then we have exactly what we want now there is a definition for f or this formula here which splits f into the symmetric and anti-symmetric part and by combining the previous two results and this um, split of f the lemma follows as we have seen it is true for symmetric and anti-symmetric f's Now with this lemma, we will eventually get to the filtrations. Um, this lemma implies that CS generates a copy of R um, with shift in grading by minus one in BS, and DS generates a copy of R with sh RS with shift in grading mi by minus one inside BS. The shifts come from the fact that CS and ds are of degree one in bs and in fact these sub pi modules fit into short exact sequences in graded r pi modules as you can see here in delta and nabla um, in delta we have that one is sent to cs and mu id of f tensor g is f times g and in nabla one is sent to ds which i forgot to put in my presentation and oh there's oh yeah there's some there's a big shift <laughs> yeah okay that's not very nice but i will change that later Okay, in, in delta one gets sent to DS with mu ID and in nabla one gets sent to CS with mu S. And mu S is of F tensor G is F times S of G. Now, if we have an expression W um, of S, S, which is S1, S2 and so on to SD, we can tensor the sequence delta together to get a filtration of the bot samuelson bimodule BSW. For BSBS, we would get this short exact sequence, which you can see here. But there are many filtrations by shifted standard bimodules for the bot samuelson bimodule. It may be unclear which filtration we should prefer but now I'm going to define a nice one. Um, for this next definition, we fix an enumeration of W such that XI is less equal than XJ. In Bruhat order, that, that would imply that I is less equal than J. For example, for A2, we would use ID less than S, less than T, less than ST, less than TS, less than STS. I think you get it. Um, we define enumeration as just mentioned. A delta filtration of a circle by module B is a filtration where BK in BK minus one and so on until B. And with these and these sub quotients, which are isomorphic isomorph to Rxi to the power of the direct sum of Hxi, where Hxi is the Hecke algebra in the Hecke algebra with positive coefficients only. Um, note that even if W is infinite, this filtration needs to be finite. Now, let me show you a short example of what these HXIs are. Um, 
if we have a quotient that is isomorphic to the tensor product of Rxi, Rxi with a shift in grading by 3, and Rxi with a shift in grading by minus 5, then Hxi is 1 plus v to the power of 3 plus v to the power of minus 5. Because these, um, yeah, they are just counted together. Then the correspond, um, the next theorem states that for a fixed enumeration of W, any circle by module B has a unique delta filtration. Moreover, for any x in W, the graded multiplicity hx of rx in the delta filtration depends only on b and x and not on the choice of enumeration of w. Um, we move on to the definition of the delta character of a circle by module b. Um, the delta character is the element ch delta of b which is defined, defined as the sum over x in w of v to the power of lx times hx of b times delta x of h, where delta x are the standard basis elements. An example to demonstrate this definition is where we observe that hid of Bs is V1 and Hs of Bs is V to the power of minus one. Then the delta character of Bs is V times delta Id plus V times V minus one times delta S, which is V plus delta S. And now this is very interesting because this is exactly um, this delta character is, of Bs is exactly the custom lustig basis element, which we have seen in the weeks before. And that is the connection that we wanted to make here that is really interesting. And this leads us directly to an example. Um, if we have W, um, the symmetric group S2, which is generated, generated by one and S. Um, we, have the, we have two bases for this. Um, on the one hand, we have the standard basis given by delta one and delta S. And on the other hand, the cost on lustig basis, which is B1 and BS. Now we can say that the change of base matrix is given by 1v01 because indeed the vector with the basis elements, the standard basis elements times the change of basis matrix gives us exactly the custom lustig basis elements. Since B1 is delta 1 and B2 is delta 1 times V1 plus delta S. And this is what we saw before. So yeah, um, analogous, we can have this definition for nabla instead of delta. Um, the nabla character of the circle by module is the element ch nabla of b defined as the sum of x over in w over x and w times v to the power of lx um, times h prime x of b that times delta x, which is in h. And similar as before, we have h prime id of bs, which is v to the power of minus one and h prime s of bs, which is V1. Therefore, the nabla character of Bs is V to the power of minus one bar times delta ID 
plus v times v bar times delta s plus which is v plus delta s and here we can see that it is the same as before so we now know that the delta character of b s is exactly the same as the del the nabla character of b s mm -hmm. for any s in s and this is again this b s the custom lustig basis element now we have these properties which follow from the definition actually um we have the delta character of b tensor b prime is the delta character of b plus the delta character of b prime and the nabla character of b tensor b prime and this is the nabla character of b plus the nabla character of b prime and the delta character of b with a great shift in grading by one is v times the delta character of b and similarly for the nabla character and this is for all circle by modules b and b prime this implies that we have a set linear that we have set linear maps um delta character and nabla character which go from the grothendieck from the split grothendieck group of circle by modules to the hecke algebra yes and you have the same typo as before it should be at, at, at times not a not a plus okay what the property here should yes, be yes exactly. okay okay and now we already get to the um theorem and i see i have miscalculated the time extremely <laughs> um this is a very important um theorem it's one of the main theorems of the book actually and it's called the circles categorification theorem it's it has three points the first point is that there is a the Hecke algebra homomorphism C, which goes from H to the split Grothendieck group of circle by modules, sending B S to the symbol B S for all S in S. Mm -hmm. And the second point is there is a bijection between W and the set of intercomposable objects of circle by modules up to shift and isomorphisms. And the intercomposable object BW appears as direct summons of the Bot-Samusin bimodule BS of W for a reduced expression of W. Moreover, all other summons of BS of W are shifts of BX for X less than W in the Bruhat order. And the third character and the third point is the character function ch which we say is um, the character of delta defined as above descends to the hecke module homomorphism um, and this is ch of the split grothendieck group of circle by modules to the hecke algebra okay. yeah and this is exactly the inverse to c which we have seen in the first point here mm -hmm. and so now we conclude that the split grothendieck group of the category of circle by modules is isomorphic to the hecke algebra and that is yeah that's the main point that with that i finish my talk but ah so this was your last slide yes i'm sorry i definitely miscalculated the time uh, yeah apparently um yeah well 
Thank you very much anyway. Um, what you should mention here is that, uh, go one slide back maybe. Um, so what is not in the theorem is what you, what you try to say in uh, all those examples, that the uh, indecomposables are sent to the Kassel-Lustig basis. You only say that the indecomposables BS are sent to the BS. And indeed, the proof of the letter is much harder. Um, yeah. And we will see it later. Um, okay, yeah, uh, apparently you have miscalculated the time. That's okay. Let me just 